Welcome back to Mr. PLS. This is Algebra 2, Unit 2, Topic 2, and this is Lesson SLT number 10. And we're talking about polynomial expressions and talking about writing them in standard form and determining what type of polynomial function you have. All right, so starting off with a simple combining like terms in these expressions, uh, we have a polynomial. Remember, polynomial means many terms. In this case, we have one, two, three, four different terms. And you can only combine like terms, which means that they have to have the same variable and they have to have the same exponent. So these two can be combined because they both have x squared. So this term is 4x squared. So this is minus 1x squared. 4 minus 1 makes 3x squared. And then the two middle terms can also be simplified because negative 2x is plus another x makes negative 1x. Or just negative x is the same thing. You don't really need the coefficient of 1 because anytime you have 1 of something, there's 1x right there. And you cannot simplify this any further because you have squareds and x's. They have to, have to be the exact same variable with the exact same exponent to add and subtract. Multiplying and dividing you can do. You can always do, but adding and subtracting you cannot. Over here, I'm going to have to distribute first. 2 times 8x is 16x, and 2 times 5 is 10. Bring down the 19x, and then I can combine the first term and the last term. All, remember, always keep the sign that comes in front of it. 16x's minus 19x's makes negative 3x's. Bring down the plus 10, and there's your answer. All right, last one. Um, I can combine these two x to the thirds. Negative 1 minus 3 more makes negative 4x to the thirds. Bring down the minus 5x to the fourths because there aren't anything else to combine it with. And bring down the 7x squared because there's nothing to combine it with. Now, this is not in what's called standard form, which is what we're going to talk about in this lesson. Standard form means that you always put the exponents from greatest to smallest. Um, and the reason why we do that is because it makes it obvious what the leading coefficient is, and it puts it right in the front. And it also tells us the degree of the function, which we'll get into here in a moment. So polynomial is any function that's under this format. Um, so for this polynomial, so n represents, so n right here is the degree. And a sub 0 is this last term right here, which is the constant term. Uh, constant just means that it's a number. There's no variable. It's just a number. It could be positive. It could be negative. It could be a decimal. It could be any real number. Uh, it just can't be an imaginary number, which we'll talk about later on. And a sub n just means the in front of the x, which is the leading coefficient. Coefficient is the word for the number that's being multiplied by the variable. All right. Um, algebra progressions name three different. So these are the three ways that you've seen already for quadratus. We have standard form, factored form, and vertex form. And you've already studied what each one is used for and how they are each helpful. Three different ways of writing the same quadratic equation. Polynomial function is in standard form if it's written in descending order from greatest to least. So, or from, I'm sorry, if it's descending from left to right, it would be, so it's greatest to least from left to right. Now, these are different types of functions you have seen so far. If it's just a number and no variable, it has a degree of zero, then it's just called a constant, it's just a number. If it's linear, it just has an x, no x squared, no x to the third. The degree is one because the exponent of that variable is one. Quadratics is anything with an x squared. It can or it doesn't have to have an x after it. So if it just has three x squared, then it's still quadratic, but it can also have an x. It can also have a term with a degree that's less than the degree of the quad of the function. So this is called quadratic. It can also have an, an x of one and an x to the zeroth power. Cubic means the greatest degree is 3. So 3, 2, 1, 0. It's already in standard form. Quartic. Quartic means to the fourth power, and quintic will be the fifth power. Fourth power is the biggest exponent in that polynomial. So now the rules for polynomials, which I may or may not have skipped over. So I did skip it over over here. So the exponents have to be whole numbers, and the coefficients have to be real numbers. So in front of these have to all be real numbers, that 4, that 3, that 2, that 1. In other words, you can't have i times x squared. That is no longer a polynomial because that is an imaginary number. It has to be a real number. It can be something like pi. Even though pi is irrational, it's still a real number. 
So as long as the coefficient is a real number, it's still a polynomial. The other thing you have to have is an exponent that is a whole number, meaning you can't have x to the 1 half because that's not a whole number, that's a fraction. Whole numbers would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You can also can't have x to the negative first power, which is, okay, so that doesn't work either because negative 1 is a whole number. I'm sorry, it's not a whole number. All right, decide whether the function is a polynomial. Write the function in standard form and then find its degree, its type, and its leading coefficient. The function is, is this a polynomial? So let's see. Uh, 1 half is real, negative 3 is real, negative 7 is real. So far, so good. 2 is a whole number, 4 is a whole number, and this is really x to the 0th power, since there is no x here, and 0 is also a whole number. So this function is a polynomial. Next question says write it in the standard form. Well, standard form just means put it in order from greatest to least. So I'm erasing this so I can show you that this is one term, this is another term, this is another term. If I put them in order, I'm going to put the one with the biggest exponent first, that's negative 3x to the fourth plus 1 half x to the second. The coefficients do not matter right now. All I'm looking for is the exponents, 4, 2, and then this one's 0, so I put minus 7 at the end. The degree is the biggest exponent, which was 4. So this is a quartic function. Quartic meaning a degree of 4. It's not cubic. It's above that. It has to the fourth power. It could have up to four answers, which we'll talk about in the next video. The leading coefficient is uh, 1 half. I'm sorry, it's not 1 half. I almost said 1 half. Now, don't be tricked by that. This is the leading coefficient in the problem, but that's not in standard form. So it needs to be in standard form. It's always the coefficient of the biggest exponent, the variable with the biggest exponent. So negative 3 is the leading coefficient because that's the coefficient of the variable with the biggest exponent. And that will become important also in the next video because determining whether or not the leading coefficient is positive or negative will determine what the end behavior is for that function. Uh, one more of these. So this one is not a polynomial. And the reason why I know it's not, there is no coefficient there. So it really has a coefficient of 1. This has a coefficient of 3. You can call that, although it's not really a coefficient, it's a base. And the whole numbers is what all the exponents have to be. 3 is a whole number. X is not even a number. X is a variable. So therefore, it does not meet the rules for being a polynomial. So this is not a polynomial. All right, um, for the next one, you would actually need to solve this through. So x cubed, there is no x cubes over here. So 1x cubed plus no x cubed still makes an x cubed. I'll go to x squareds next. There's no x squareds here. None plus 3 makes 3x three squareds. And then I'll combine. In fact, I'm going to cross them off as I go, so that way I don't accidentally use it twice. I'll go to x's next. I like to put things in standard form to begin with. 2x's plus negative 2x's cancels out because they're opposites of each other. And negative 5 plus positive 4 is negative 1. Now, when looking at this, this is a polynomial. All its coefficients are real numbers. All of its exponents are whole numbers. Uh, it's already in standard form. I already did that. It has a degree of 3, so it's cubic. And the leading coefficient is 1. Because remember, I put a 1 in front because anything times 1 is itself. All right. Um... I'm going to skip through some of these questions. I do want to go to at least one of these homework questions. Um, once again, I like to put things in standard form first, so I'm going to combine like terms. This term can be combined with this term because they're both cubed, and these two terms can be combined because they're both x's. They're like linear equations. Uh, so combine these two. 9x, 9 minus 2 makes 7x cubed. There are no squareds. Oh, sorry. Let me try that again. I just now realized there is a to the fourth power first. So we bring this one down first before I can combine any terms. Then 9 minus 2 makes 7 positive 7x seven cubed. Done with that, done with that, done with that. Next comes the x's because there's no squareds. Negative 1 plus 5 makes 4, 4x's. Four All right, so this function is quartic. It's a polynomial, yes. Uh, standard form, I already did that. Its degree is 4, so it's quartic. And the leading coefficient is negative 2. All right, I think I'm going to wrap it up just right there. Please give it a like if I helped you learn something about classifying polynomials and finding the degree of polynomials and writing them in standard form. That's pretty much what we covered in this video. Thanks again for watching. Uh, please check out the next video if you want to know about end behavior.
Thanks again. Have a good day.